There comes a time in every kingdom's life when it gets invaded. And the same is true for you. And so in this sketch, we're going to learn how the innate immune system recognizes those invaders to get the immune response revved up and started. As you may remember, the components of the innate immune system are always in place. That's why it's called the innate immune system. And that means they don't need to be trained and produced in order to start fighting against pathogens. But that raises a question. How can these innate immunity warriors fight any old enemy without any previous training? And that's where the genius of the innate immune system comes in. It recognizes particular molecular structures that are, and this is the important part, common to microbes and injured and dead cells. And so in the sketch, I'm going to talk about the broad classes of these types of molecular patterns. You should also just know that the general setup here is that your innate immune cells have receptors, and then these molecular patterns serve as ligands for those receptors. And the first one we want to talk about are PAMPs, which reminds me of none other than the best drink around, a fizzy, refreshing can of Pamplemousse flavored water. Nothing like drinking a little bit of artificial flavoring out of a sick 80s pattern can. But anyway, PAMPs, which stands for Pathogen Associated Molecular Patterns, are exactly what their name describes. They're common molecular patterns typically found on pathogens, like bacteria and viral nucleic acids. Some examples of PAMPs are bacterial lipopolysaccharides and peptidoglycans found in their cell walls. So we'll have this gang of merry invaders slinging these juicy pamplemousses towards the castle to symbolize these pathogen-associated molecular patterns. And notice how they're wearing bacteria and virus-shaped armor? Yeah, that's because, again, PAMPs are found on these types of pathogens. All right, we got a little damage here, and while this is an unfortunate scenario, it's certainly a memorable one to discuss the next type of pattern that the innate immune system recognizes. So similar to PAMPs are DAMPs, or damage-associated molecular proteins, which we've symbolized with this damaged tower growing quite damp as it slowly sinks into the old pond. Instead of being common molecular patterns found on a pathogen, DAMPs are common patterns found on the surface of injured or dead host cells. And that's why we've got some injured townspeople surrounding this damaged tower. Heat shock proteins, which are associated with cell damage, are a good example of DAMPs. So, ironically, we've lit this tower on fire so you remember this common type of damp. Now that we know what the cells of the innate immune system are on the lookout for, how do they actually recognize these PAMPs and DAMPs? We'll find the answer to that question up here on the ramparts of our castle. Each of these sentinels has a very important job, to recognize these common molecular patterns and then alert the castle that, you know, bad guys are here. There are a whole bunch of pattern recognition receptors, so we'll just cover four of the most important ones today. First up, the elephant, or sexy troll in the room. Toll-like receptors, or for our purposes, troll-like receptors. These TLRs are membrane glycoproteins, and they're found in plasma and endosomal membranes of all kinds of cells, phagocytes, dendritic cells, B cells, and endothelial cells. The next sentinel, who's lecking his lips and looking through a C-shaped scope, is our symbol for C-lectin receptors, or CLRs. Those are also membrane glycoproteins, and they're found in plasma and endosomal membranes, just like TLRs. Next to him, nodding off, is our nod-like receptor, and unlike the previous two, this is a cytoplasmic pattern recognition receptor. And then last, all rigged up, is our final scope, which is our symbol for rig-like receptors. That's another type of cytoplasmic receptor, just like the nod likes. Okay, so we've recognized an invader. Now we need to send the alert. So once our troll recognizes an invader, he lights the signal flame. This should remind you that when a receptor binds a ligand, so when one of these receptors binds a PAMP or a DAMP, this triggers a signal pathway to activate transcription factors so that the genes of inflammatory and antiviral cytokines can be expressed. Some examples of these downstream cytokines include TNF, IL-1, CCL2. Don't worry about this alphabet soup. We'll cover these in other lessons. For now, just remember that these cytokines act as mediators of the immune system. In this case, they cause recruitment and activation of the various cell types that enact an immune response directed against the pathogen or injured cell in order to destroy it. And that's it for recognizing invaders. Time for a cold, bubbly can of Pamplemousse water. <laughs>